Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I have a couple of Chilean reds in front of me. Uh, now, Chile, when it first became uh, got came to public attention uh, outside Chile, uh, the grape that uh, made its name was Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, since then, um, Carmen Air has been getting a bit of airing, Pinot Noir, Syrah. Uh, but there, there, there's now a, a group of people who are thinking, well, hang on, we've got these quite nice, interesting old vineyards that uh, date, uh, that, that are quite old, uh, dating back to uh, maybe the first half of the uh, 20th century, sometimes even older, of grapes that are uh, less highly thought of, but which are potentially rather interesting if you treat them with a little TLC. Um, so uh, look for wines made from pais, um, a, a, a grape that's uh, known in, in bits of Spain as Listan Negro. Uh, uh, look for Sanso, um, but uh, these two wines I've got are made from Carignan. Uh, and so what does it say about this Carignan? Put Carignan grapevines planted in 1940. So the first one I've got here, again, yeah, these 1940 vines, Villa Lobos, Vinedo Silvestre, uh, from the Lowell uh, region, the Lowell region of uh, Colchagua Valley, um, weighing it at 12%. Let's give it a whirl. Smells young, fresh, vibrant and fruity. It's 2012, so it's already three years old. Uh, but it feels like it's got this, um, like a uh, ever so slight uh, cola pastel. Uh, do you remember cola spangles? I, I can't remember the last time I had a cola spangle. It's probably 40 years or so since, I, since I've ever seen one. Uh, I don't know, they, they probably hope they don't exist now. They, were, they weren't all that great. But there's a smell here that reminds me of a cola edge with a little bit of uh, cola mixed with blackcurrant pastel. I think of the blackcurrant pastel as being classic chilli. But here it smells, the, yeah, there's, a, there's this cola edge as well. Hops as well. A young, fresh, almost like uh, wine you want to quaff. And it's 12% alcohol. Uh, that, so it's not going to, uh, if you do quaff rather a lot of it, it's not going to uh, uh, bludgeon you around the head in the way that some wines could. Touch of sweetness on the finish makes me wonder whether they've um, uh, stopped the fermentation or whether the fermentation has stopped and they've not bothered... Uh, um, letting it, um, uh, pushing it through with extra uh, uh, vicious yeast to finish it off. There's, so there's this sweetness there, uh, and I'd almost have preferred it without that sweetness. Um, I don't know whether this, oh, then this is where I find out the sweetness is. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's from the fruit rather than from any sugar that's left in there. I like it. Uh, I like its freshness and its daintiness. It really is red wine rather than black wine, which can be a problem with uh, Carignan. Some people are tempted to over extract it. Uh, but yeah, there's a there's a freshness and a floral character here. So uh, good in parts. I'm going to have another sup. Yeah, good in parts. Nice smoky edges. Nice floral edge. Not quite sure about that touch of sweetness. Next one, um, it's, so that was 12% alcohol. This next one's 14% alcohol. Um, and this is uh, Miguel Torres uh, Cordillera Carignan, 2010. Um, so uh, from the Maule Valley. Um, and again, uh, here it says vines, um, many, many of the vines more than 80 years old. Uh, so it's a slightly different beast. And it's also, as I pour it out, I can see it's a rather darker color. Uh, let's just uh, see how the two compare. Ah, interesting. I've got to just had a look at the cork, and it says on 2001. Uh, I'm not quite sure uh, how that equates with the 2010 on the uh, on the label, but um, maybe they ran out of 2010 corks, or maybe they just uh, um, <laughs> misprinted when they were doing the corks. Anyway, better taste it. And this is a much richer, uh, darker, more damson and berry um, character to the wine. Previous one was on that black currant, uh, black currant edge. Here, this feels warmer, softer, spicier, riper, uh, plusher. Uh, so a different beast. If one's a lunchtime wine, this is more the evening wine. Yeah, dense, dark. Um, it's a little bit of raisin and character going on there, but it's not gone so far that the fruits are all dried out. So you do get some of the black currant coming through, but these berries as well. A touch of spice, a, a little bit raisiny. Um, and uh, yeah, just a little bit on that jammy side, but uh, just on the right side. They, they've not gone too too far with that. It feels like a wine. If you'd asked me how how old it was, I wouldn't have put it as 2010. I'd have put it as something quite a bit younger because it's still firm and vigorous and 
Um, I'd be interested to see what happens to that with time. Um, for me, Carignan, I think of, um, when I think of Carignan in France, I think of uh, Carignan adding backbone to a wine and then people wrapping something like Grenache around it to, uh, uh, to, um, yeah, to flesh it out. But here, it feels like the grapes have got a little bit of flesh in them anyway. And um, it, looks, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna have another swig. So yes, that's my, I, I prefer that of the two. But they're, they're both nice. And uh, so look out for Carignan in Chile. Um, there's um, a, a lot of it seems to come from a, a region called Cajenes. Uh, but because um, that, that's where I think a lot, a lot of the uh, uh, the old vines, uh, maybe just be one guy who's uh, selling. Well, you can have a bit, you can have a bit. But um, uh, but yeah, it's another string to Chile's bow. And uh, on the strength of this, it's a potentially very interesting one. See you soon.